Thank you very much, Eddie. Um, and thank you all for being here. And thank all the speakers for really setting the tone. Um, what I'd like to talk about is not about the treatment centers, um, actually not about the um, escalation in terms of the disease, disease itself from a medical perspective, but actually about the economic impact it's having, what it's doing to businesses um, in the private sector, what it's doing to the potential um, to lose the dividends that Sierra Leone gained over the past 10 years. Um, since the end of the war, we've been growing steadily. Our GDP growth last year was 20%. Um, the year before, it was 15%. A lot of that coming from iron ore mining. But as a result of that, there was a real buzz in the economy. Um, incomes were rising. Businesses were opening up. From May this year to, to the 26th um, of September, just Friday, May we had one case. As we've all been hearing, um, we now have over 1,900. Um, and what has happened? We had nine airlines flying to Sierra Leone um, very quickly, starting with um, towards the end of July with Arik Air, then followed by BA, then Kenya Airways and Air France. We suddenly felt as though we were going under siege as a nation when airline after airline started canceling their flights. And we're actually in a position now where we only have two airlines flying into the country. We used to have 84 flights a week um, going to various parts of the world, to Europe and into Africa. We're now reduced to just 12. And of those 12, none of them are going to the west of, of Sierra Leone, or rather, to, yeah, to the east of Sierra Leone. So at the moment, if you want to go from Sierra Leone to Ghana, you either have to go to Casablanca um, or you have to go to Belgium. Um, and with that, we've seen already significant um, cuts uh, in the projected growth for the coming for this current year so this in, in May we're looking at a growth rate of 11 percent that's now been reduced to 6.6 percent um, and looking at the currency as you could imagine um, there's been devaluation already and a very short space of time we've gone from a US dollar rate of 400 4,400 leones to 4,800 leones and of course if you're trying to blind the black market which a lot of people are doing because this simply isn't the currency in the country anymore um, those rates are even higher and what is that actually what is can I have the next slide? Ah. What does that transpire to? Well, in real terms, it means job losses, business collapse. Um, one of the key things that happened, we, as, you, as was mentioned, are building the Hilton Hotel, and our contractors, because of the scale of the project, actually are foreign contractors. We, there was no Sierra Leone um, contracting firm that could do this job, so we are using foreign builders. Um, they actually stuck out, stuck it out for quite a long time, and were really being you know, positive and trying to stick it out and say we're here for the long term. But by the middle of last month, you know, by the 13th of September, um, they were in a position, like so many other businesses, where a combination of the fact that the airlines weren't flying, insurance was becoming impossible to get, um, they were under a lot of pressure from, from um, family members and, and you know, the, their board, particularly because of the sort of sense of hysteria which is associated with Ebola, they had to leave. Um, and we are just one company who is of, of many companies who are facing similar sorts of situations. So the question that I want to talk about, or the question I want to pose today is, as Colin rightly said, we are definitely in a crisis. Um, and if it's not checked, if the disease, the spread is not contained, that would become even more dramatic. Um, I do think that the projections of the CDC are perhaps slightly exaggerated because there is intervention happening. And with the help of MSF and, and others, hopefully we'll, we will not see that 500,000 cases in January. But be that as it may, um, whatever the case, what we're seeing now is a situation where if attention isn't given to the potential for co total economic collapse. We will have a situation where in a few months time, we may, by God's grace, contain the disease, but we will have no jobs. We would have had businesses go, you know, companies go out of business, and the ability for them to get back into business will be even more challenging. So what is it that we want to look at today? We want to look at some of the short-term measures which potentially should be taken into consideration, questions that perhaps need to be asked about the difference between a right response, a right reaction, in what is clearly a complex humanitarian situation, and potentially an overreaction. Is there an overreaction when it comes to the hysteria that's 
being associated. I mean, I, I spoke to a juice manufacturer who exports juice from Sierra Leone. He's had all his orders canceled. Ebola will not spread through that juice. <laughs> <laughs> However, there, is, there, there has to be a balance. The messaging that's going out, uh, and, and it's not just the case with juice manufacturers. It's also the case with anybody who has any projects in the pipeline. Funding, raising, getting investment, everything is suspended. And I, I've already mentioned business collapse. We talk, I spoke yesterday to the um, management team at the Radisson. The first four-star hotel, of course, will be the first five-star. Um, but the first four-star mm. hotel that opened in April, they've seen their occupancies drop from 85% to about 5%. Thankfully, they've not laid off their staff. They've been able to come up with an arrangement with them. But the message that we're, I'd, I'd like to give, the thought I'd like to plant, is that consideration needs to be given to what's what can be done now in terms of the economy? There's some simple things. Um, I, I'm very glad the Minister for Africa is here and we started speaking just before the session. And one of the things I said is, well, what conversations are being had, for example, by the UK government with people like British Airways? SN Brussels is flying. It's a European airline. They have European staff. They've been able to negotiate with their unions. Is that something that BA should be considering? Is there some influence that can be placed on BA to do that? It's a flagship carrier. And because of that, what BA does, others follow. And in terms of the sense of comfort and or, or lack thereof, that is given by BA's actions, I mean, I think, you know, the nods I'm getting around the room tells me that you all understand what I'm saying. Another thing which we really need to consider is w the AU. I know that um, we have had support from the AU, but perhaps it isn't quite enough. And perhaps more needs to be done when AU countries such as Kenya close their borders. Um, and their airline, Kenya Airways, which is our only route into the rest of East Africa, sh you know, stop flying. Again, the question is asked, could more be done? Should there be some conversations going on about making sure these airlines res resume flights um, and you know, sort of provide that gateway? Um, when it comes to these short-term measures, there are a few other things that need to be taken into consideration. We have hundreds of NGOs now moving into the countries to man these beds, to man these facilities. I've got one minute. I'm the worst one. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, to man these facilities. Questions need to be asked. People need to be thinking about using, making sure they're buying local, keeping local businesses afloat. Liquidity into the market, into the financial sector, that also needs to be taken into consideration. Um, and finally, um, Adi had said that he wanted me to say a little bit about what we're doing as the diaspora. And so just one word in closing. We are making ourselves available as diaspora to support the efforts of the British government and the NGOs, particularly MSF we've been speaking to for about a month, um, you know, very much on a constant basis, um, just trying to do all that we can. And one specific area is with regards to recruitment. So 700 beds from the UK government, but they need staff. And although there have been 400 volunteers, that's volunteers. Those then need to translate into a hit rate of people who will actually go. We have hundreds, thousands of Sierra Leoneans and other African diaspora in the NHS. There's some messaging that we're well placed to do, which we're doing already. And our, uh, uh, you know, our, our position is that we will do whatever we can, and there are tangible things we can do to support those efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you. And please, ladies and gentlemen.